Hey, our saviors, it's Pastor Anders hanging out with my dad, Pastor Kai Nilsson, and we're just hanging out in their place in White Bear Lake right now with uh, the dogs who wanted to be a part of the video. How beautiful is that? Uh, but today we're going to be talking about love. And so you know that if you got the Holy Week packets, uh, the symbol for today is a heart. Uh, and the text that accompanies that comes from the Gospel of Matthew, the 22nd chapter. Uh, we, we frequently refer to this text as the greatest commandment, and it's where Jesus implores people to think about love uh, as loving God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, uh, and that greatest commandment is in fact to love your neighbor as yourself. Uh, I think that the word love gets thrown around a lot. Uh, for instance, I love this shirt because uh, it's the first shirt that Nicole got for me after we started dating. Uh, I love these pants because I've worn them every day of the quarantine. Uh, I love these shoes because they're the most comfortable ones that I have. Uh, but this love that Jesus is talking about is a little bit deeper than that. Uh, it's the love that can uh, has the power to change and transform uh, individuals and communities. Uh, and so since he's sitting right here, I thought that I would ask my dad, uh, what is it that we can be doing uh, uh, to show that transformative love to people even when we can't be physically gathered yeah. together. Yeah. I think uh, one of the other misconceptions about love in our culture is that it's also connected with a feeling. Mm. And uh, you know, you think about Hallmark cards and you know, Hallmark cards are always sappy and sentimental and gooey and they're, and they're wonderful in that way. Um, but sometimes you just don't feel like it. Mm. And if you think about what's happening in our culture today, I mean, the, the thoughts I've had are a couple. One is, um, people are just going through a thousand different emotions. Yeah. And how do you help people navigate and, and honor those emotions? I think maybe one of the best acts of love for us these days is by saying, if you're really anxious, it's okay to be there right now. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not very worried, let's talk about why. Because <laughs> there's a lot of things that are happening around yeah. us and how can we be a neighbor? Even if we don't think it's a big deal, other people do. So how mm -hmm. do we kind of make sure we connect with that? Um, it's also a time when a lot of the most vulnerable people are needing to be extended, you know, some kind of gesture of love toward mm -hmm. them. I think about people locked up in the, the nursing homes, you know, they can't see family members and friends. I yeah. think about uh, teachers and students, they're going crazy trying mm -hmm. to figure out how to yep. deal with this thing called distant learning and, and to honor the relationships that they built over seven or eight months. And so uh, there's just a ton of ways, it, even from a distance that it feels to me like we can really have a chance to extend ourselves to people. And I guess the eye, if we had an eye toward anyone at this point, it would be who in our culture are, are the people who are most vulnerable or, or taking a lot of the impact of it. Mm. Probably two more quick ones, healthcare workers. Yep. I mean, they are frontline people. There's Absolutely. a lot of anxiety yeah. uh, for them. Uh, and then people who are gonna lose their jobs who or who already have. And mm -hmm. so, Jesus always began with an eye toward his field, like to me, those who are most vulnerable. Yeah. And that's, I mean, we've got, unfortunately, a long list of them uh, at this right. time for sure. Right. So, and those are precisely the neighbors that he's talking about. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, you know, for you, it would be kind of interesting for me. I know that your, uh, your letter went out this week. Yep. And uh, I know it's a difficult time for you because yep. uh, you loved your community. Yep. And uh, it's been a hard thing for you to even imagine, you know, how do you kind of, Yep. keep bring closure to what have been very important relationships so what are you thinking about these days in regard to doing well that? you know um obviously because we're at home we have a lot more time to think and sometimes <laughs> that's great and sometimes that's not uh but what it's really allowed me to do in the last couple of weeks since we've gotten this news and kind of made the transition and writing the letter and uh, thinking about the next steps is it's it's allowed me to think about all the things that this community has given to me that I have really really loved and so uh, I want to thank you for those things again so thank you for the energy uh, and enthusiasm and uh, vibrancy of life uh, for your joy uh, but most importantly thank you for loving this community and beyond um, thanks for loving me, uh, and more importantly, thanks for loving Nicole in the way that you have. Uh, it's been a really important thing for us, and we could not be more grateful. Uh, so today, as we're thinking about what this, what this journey through Holy Week is going to look like, uh, today we focus on that word love, and we think about all the things in our own lives that we love, uh, that we might take for granted, uh, and we also think about the ways that we can continue to extend that love 
to our neighbors. And so uh, please join us on that journey. And we hope that uh, this scripture and this symbol and this uh, little back and forth, super informal <laughs> video will help you think about those sayings in maybe a little bit different way. Uh, until we see you again, peace. And still there? Still there? Good. <laughs> um, I want to say thank you to you at Our Saviors because I know what it's like to go into a first call with all the anxiety as a first time pastor. Um, you have received Anders beautifully. You've helped shape him. Uh, you've given him an imagination about what he can be as a pastor, not only in a local community, your church, but also in a larger community. These are really big deals. And I know for the sake of the whole church, as he's going to continue to be able to serve, but also to just for the sake of what you did in these last couple of years. Uh, I'll be forever grateful to the staff and for all the ways that you loved him, for this community, the ways that you've uh, shown acceptance and, and encouragement to him along the way. Uh, I'm going to be forever grateful for our saviors in Faribault for the work that you did the last couple of years. So thanks. And now cut this before we start crying. Peace. <laughs>